So let's talk about some of the multiple choice questions on partial fractions. I think the weightage of this overall topic is not that much, so I don't expect many questions coming from this topic out of the 40 questions. But nevertheless, let's I put together a few questions, around eight questions, I think, which kind of covers uh, the whole syllabus and gives a good flavor or in terms of the variety of the problems that we can address. So let's jump into this. And as always, check out my crash course videos on partial fractions to get a refresher on the concepts and what each means. Uh, it's a small topic, so I don't think it will take much time. But if you can go through the crash course and understand that, that topic first, and then when, once after completing that, if you try to solve the same CQs, it will be easier for you to connect the dots and it will help you really remember some of the tips and tricks on how to score on MCQs. All right, so let's jump on this one and let's attack these eight questions and see what's going on. Okay, the question number one coming up. Degree of a polynomial in the denominator. This is one of the fundamental questions that you need to understand. What is the degree? So we're asking, what is the question asking? The degree of the polynomial in the denominator. That means over here, what is the degree of the polynomial in the denominator? So like we know in the first episode on partial fractions, if you saw the video, I've explained in detail how to figure out the degree. And what degree primarily means is if you take the denominator and this whole thing can be defined as you know one term and it has got two subterms, but the whole thing can be defined as one term in the denominator. So you take the exponent of each of the x variables over here. The exponent of x is kind of one here, x raised to one, so this is one. And over here, the exponent is two, so it's two here, x square. And if you add this both, whatever is the degree, that's the degree of this polynomial in the denominator. Since it's multiplied, we have to add these two exponents. So three is the degree of the polynomial. That's the highest degree of a single term. So if you had more terms, then you have to find out which is the highest degree for each of these terms. But since there are no more terms, there are just kind of two subterms, and this whole thing has, is one term, and it's multiplied, right? In that case, you have to just uh, take each of these subterms get that degree or the, get the highest power of that uh, particular subterm and go to the next subterm get the highest power and then just add those exponents and whatever is the degree final degree you get that will be the degree of the whole polynomial in the denominator so the answer is three over here next question is which of the following is an example of improper fraction so if you remember uh, in terms of polynomials there are two types of fractions one is the proper and one is the improper and the way it differentiated is uh, polynomial is nothing but a ratio of two expressions for example if you see here it's a ratio of two expressions so you would take the highest degree of the numerator then you take the highest degree of the denominator okay so for improper fraction the degree of numerator the degree of the, the highest degree of numerator will be always greater than or equal to the highest degree in the denominator. Let me repeat it again. For an improper fraction, the degree or the highest degree of the numerator will always be greater than or equal to the highest degree in the denominator. For example, if you see this problem, in the numerator, the highest degree is two, okay? The highest degree is two. Whereas in the denominator, the highest degree is three. In this case, the degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator and hence this is called as a proper fraction okay this is called as a proper fraction whereas in this case it's asking an example of the improper fraction so we need to do the opposite of that we need to find a polynomial whose degree in the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree in the denominator so let's solve by one by one on this one okay let's see what's happening here in this case, the degree of the numerator is four and the degree of the denominator is three. So is four greater than three is the answer? Yes, I think the answer is yes. So I think this is a potential answer, but let's check out the other answers. In this case, the degree of numerator is one. The degree of denominator is two. Is one greater than two? No, one is less than two. So this cannot be the answer. In this case, the degree of the numerator is almost like two into x raised to zero because that's there is no x variable. That means the degree of the numerator is zero and the degree of the denominator is one. Is zero, is numerator greater than uh, denominator? No, numerator is less than the degree. So this is also ruled out. And in this case, the degree of numerator is one 
and the degree of denominator is 2. So is 1 greater than 2? No, the degree on the numerator is again less than 2. So even this is not the option. So the correct answer is A over here because if you clearly see the degree in the numerator is 4 and the degree of numerator is greater than the degree highest degree in the denominator which is 3. So that's the answer. Now let's take the third MCQ. Which of the following is an example of improper fraction? Kind of a similar type of uh, question but let's let's understand the fractions. Now we know that we have to find the degree of numerator should be greater than or equal to the degree of denominator. So it can be equal also. So let's try to do that. Okay, what is the degree of the numerator here? The degree of the numerator is 2. What is the degree of denominator? Degree of denominator also is 2. So degree of numerator is equal to degree of denominator and this satisfies this condition. So this could be an answer. So let's kind of park it. Let's check the other ones and come back. What is the case of this? The degree of denominator is numerator is 1. Okay, and the degree of denominator is 2. And 1 is neither greater nor uh, equal to 2. So this is ruled out. In this case, the degree of its x raised to 0, the degree of numerator is 0, and the degree of denominator is 1. Again, 1, 0 is less than 1. So again, this will not satisfy the condition because we need greater than or equal to. And in this case, the degree of numerator is 1 and the degree of denominator is 2. Again, 1 is less than 2. Again, this will not satisfy. So this is the only condition. What we need to emphasize is it can be greater than or equal to. In the previous example, the degree of numerator was greater. In this example, the degree of numerator is equal to denominator and then also it will qualify for the proper fraction. So the answer is this. Okay. Just remember that. Okay. Now what is this? Okay. Convert uh, this. They have given us an expression and they're asking us to convert this into a partial fraction. Typically, I don't think this kind of problems will come because that might take some time to solve and for one mark you may not get, but I've just given you a flavor of this so that if it comes, how should you attack that? And this pro particular problem has been solved in detail in one of my uh, videos on how to do that and how to think about that strategically. But over here, I will quickly go through that. We have got four answers. So I've solved it, I've taken the same answer and pasted it here and let's quickly go over this and for the details on how and why it came from you can check out the detailed video okay so this is our given rational expression in terms of numerator and denominator and we have to find the partial fractions for this so if you see at the bottom uh, the first step that we always check the degree of numerator is 1 and the degree of denominator is 2 so 2 is less than uh, 1 is less than 2 so this is an example of a proper fraction and not an improper fraction so we got that first and the other thing that we always need to check whenever we solve such kind of problems is can the denominator be factorized or broken down into simpler components any any way is there a way to do that and let's we need to think through that and in this case looks like there is a way because the if we kind of factorize into this two set of linear factors x minus 3 and x plus 1 which which you expand it will give us this answer back so looks like we can factorize this and I've solved this factorization detail in the detailed video but let's assume in the exam you kind of break this down into two you convert this quadratic equation into two linear factors two with two terms or one term but both are linear x minus 3 and x plus 1 when you kind of expand this kind of thing you will get back to this answer and then now we have got two linear factors so you can express this problem uh, or you can think about this problem as a non-repetitive or non-repeatable linear factor example in which case you'll get this kind of a partial equation where you have one constant and then, then you have x by 3 and then you have another constant then you have x by 1 and once you combine once you multipl multiply this cross multiply this you'll get the same denominator so let's try to do that so this kind of given expression or given fraction can be expressed as a upon something plus b upon something where a and b are constants and our objective is to find the value of that okay and once you cross multiply this a and b like over here if you see if you cross multiply it here you get this equation and after getting this equation you if when you equate the denominator on both the sides get cancelled out okay get cancelled out and you just are left with the numerator so we just copy the numerator here 2x plus 3 and we copy the this numerator over here a into x plus 1 plus b into x minus 3 and after this uh, it's pretty simple because to find one value you have to make the other value 0 and uh, you can take any value of x so what they have done is to find a 
we can make b zero and b can be made zero if you just put x is equal to three because three minus three will become zero automatically and b will become zero and you can find the value of a and once you substitute that you by simple substitution and moving the variables properly you get the value of a as nine by four and to get the value of b you make a zero by putting it minus one which is what you have done here and by putting that we safely get a value of b which is minus four one by four and then you take both these values and put it back into this original equation where you expressed in terms of a and b and we are trying to find the value of a and b which we have found now so the final answer will become this was the given equation and we, we, were, we were expressing in terms of a and b now we have got the value of a as 9 by 4 and b as minus uh, 1 by 4 and upon this so let's see which where the answer matches so we have a as 9 by 4 and we have b as minus uh, 1 by 4 okay let's try to find where is the answer over here okay okay let's see okay over here so looks like okay we need to have minus 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4 is over here and over here but there, there is negative value here so this is not the answer this is not the answer this could be one of these two but the denominator is x plus 3 and let's see what is our denominator our denominator I think it was x minus 3 I think yeah denominator is x minus 3 and x plus 1 so that way I think the option D would be the answer x minus 3 and x plus 1 and you have this so this is our answer okay this is our answer or this question so we have converted this equation into a partial fraction okay let's take MCQ number 5 the rational expression given by this is of what type so typically when you solve the partial fractions we have to figure out from the denominator there are three or four types of problems that we have solved the above one was a linear, non repeatable linear factor let's try to see what it is so there we, and these are the four types the four types are mentioned here so which type this problem belongs to let's understand that so we have a linear factor here and we have another linear factor here but since it's repeated twice so it's as good as like writing it like this we have x plus 1 then we have x plus 2 twice right we have got x plus 2 twice then only the the power comes to 2 that means this is a linear factor this linear factor this is a linear factor but one of the linear factors is repeated so we have linear combination of linear and we have a combination of repeated so let's see if there is an answer that matches that the rational expression is of a type linear factor yeah they're linear factors but they're specific repeated linear factor and we have found the answer over here so this is a repeated linear factor they're definitely not quadratic because there is no x to the power of 2 and it's not an improper function because the degree of numerator is 2 and 2 is less than the degree of this and this if you add this is the degree of 1 this is the degree of 2 or if you see here there's 1 there's 1 and that's 1 and if you add the degree is 3 so the degree of numerator is less than 3 so it cannot be in proper fraction so it's a repeated linear factor type mcq number 6 <laughs> the factors for the denominator polynomial in this are so basically it's asking you to factorize or uh, the, the the term in the denominator the term in the denominator is x square plus 4 let's see whether we can how can we factor it okay let's see the options x plus 2 and x minus 2 that is like it looks like a plus b and a minus b over here the answer should be a square minus b square in this case the answer will be x square minus 4 but the given choice is x square plus 4 so this cannot be the answer x plus 2 and x plus 2 if that is what you calculate then you'll have a different answer you might get something of x square plus 4 x plus 4 and that's not in the denominator the denominator does not have this middle term so even that's ruled out now what is this x minus 2 x minus 2 if you calculate this it will be x square minus 4x plus 4 the only difference is this sign but this term is missing here that's also not possible so the only answer that is left is it cannot be factorized and that's what true because x square plus 4 does not have any factors you cannot easily factorize that you have to treat this as a quadratic type like you know the over here if you see quadratic this is a type of quadratic and you have to solve this in a quadratic fashion of how you do for partial fractions which is quadratic in nature 
in the denominator. So this cannot be factorized. That's the right answer. This is the right answer. Okay. The, again, the similar type of question. The factors for the denominator in the polynomial are the denominator is x square minus 9. Okay, now it's x square minus 9 is there, like we saw here, we can break into this too. So we can always make it in a square minus b square is equal to a plus b and into a minus b, we can factorize like that. So in this case, this will become x plus 3 and x minus 3. So this can be factorized. So let's see if we have options here or not. The first option looks like the perfect match. We have x plus 3 and x minus 3 and rest it can be factorized so this is not the answer x minus and x minus will not happen because then you will get a bigger term minus 9x plus 9 this will not work so this will not work this will not work so this is the answer okay i think it's the last question question number eight which of the following is a partial fraction for this particular polynomial so we have a polynomial that is given and we have to see how this can be expressed First, let's calculate the degree of the polynomial. What is the degree in the numerator and what is the degree in the denominator? Okay, so the degree in the numerator is one. The degree in the denominator is, this is one and this is two. If you add those, this becomes three and one is less than three and hence it's an example of proper fraction. Okay, that's for first thing. And let's try to understand what's happening in the denominator. So this is a linear factor and we saw the same example this cannot be factorized. So since we cannot be factorized, we are going to take this as a quadratic. So in the denominator, we have a linear and we have a quadratic Okay, equation. So whenever we have a combination of linear and quadratic, the linear function will be expressed as one over linear and there'll be a constant. And whenever we have quadratic, we'll have the quadratic function here at the top, uh, at the bottom quad but in the numerator, we'll have something of this sort, bx plus c. And the reason we'll have that is, like you remember the thumb rule, whenever we form the numerator either over here or over here, it should start with, the numerator should start with an x exponent, one less than what's in the denominator. For example, on this, the exponent is x raised to one. So we have to start the numerator with one exponent less than that, which is, a into x raised to 0 which is same as a so that's what it is okay and over here it's quadratic so it's x raised to 2 so we have to start with the numerator should start with one component one exponent less than the numerator less than the denominator so if the denominator has got a power of 2 the numerator will start with a denominator of 1 so we'll have bx that's for sure okay and then we'll have to take it all the way till we get the constant so x raised to 1 then we have a constant because this will be x raised to 0 or you can simply write only c and that's how it's going to be written. So we know that there are going to be three constants a without the x variable, b with the x variable and plus another variable c. So there are going to be three constants and let's try to find out. Over here there are only two constants, this is not the answer. Over here both are constant, there is not the third one, this is not the answer. This has a b c okay now let's check the degree over here the degree is one and the degree over here is x raised to zero so this is good for the linear factor for the quadratic the degree is two and hence the term of the numerator should start with one degree less than this so the because it's a proper fraction so it has to be less than that so we start with one degree over here and then we take it all the way till the degree becomes zero c x raised to zero is c so looks like this could be a potential answer let's hold it for now okay and at the bottom also there is a linear term and there's a quad term and now let's take the option d the option d also has three constants but it's split so this looks okay and this also looks okay but the problem is that why we are taking x squared plus 4 twice this does not make sense because there's only two terms in the denominator right there are only not two terms there's only one term but both are joined so if the x squared plus 4 is not repeated it's just doing one time if it was raised to the square then it becomes repeated but it is not raised to the square it's only once so it cannot appear twice here it's appearing as twice so it cannot happen so this is also ruled out the right answer is c okay so that's all we had a quick wrap up all these things give a good flavor of a variety of problems and i don't think you're going to get more than this in the exam the, the nature of the numbers might be different but if you grasp this 
and like in this video i also have explained you a quick on where the answer is coming and what, what is the rational behind that so combined with this if you follow my other videos on what is partial fraction and i put a crash course if you follow that i think it should be pretty smooth in securing your marks for partial fractions i hope this video was useful and i'll see you in the next one good luck